All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength the Power. So the court documents from Sean Roden's actual court case um, have been made public now, and they're kind of making the rounds on all the uh, bodybuilding forums online. Now, in these court documents, there's a couple of interesting things. Number one um, is the actual... This is basically what the case against Sean Roden is built on. These are the statements made um, by the victim, the supposed victim in this case, um, and this is basically the essence of the probable cause against Sean Roden. So this is basically the story of the accuser. Now, there's some very specific details in these documents, and this video is probably definitely going to get demonetized. Um, so it's probably not going to have a lot of views on it. It's not going to have any ads on it, which is fine. I just want to get this information out there to you guys. But pretty much any video that I've made about Sean Roden after um, this alleged incident has been immediately demonetized, which I find kind of weird. It's like his name has just been blacklisted from YouTube. So let's go ahead and break this down for you guys here, piece by piece. So this right here um, is the specific part kind of telling the accuser's story. This information is based on evidence obtained from the following witnesses. Melissa Crandall, Trey Bermhall, LKH. Now those are the initials of the accuser. Um, so they don't actually list her full name. I actually have a pretty good idea of who it is. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I know who it is, but I'm not going to say the name of the accuser in this video because there's a reason why they don't um, list the full name of the accuser in cases like this, because number one, it's a very sensitive case. And number two, the reason why I don't want to say it is some of the comments that I've seen on these videos I've posted so far. Um, I think if the name of this person were made public, they would definitely get harassed by people who don't believe her story. And then it says, Declaration of Probable Cause. Your declarant bases this information upon the following. The statement of competitive female bodybuilder, LKH, that on or about October 12th, 2019, she, along with a photographer with whom she had just completed a photo session, went to visit her bodybuilding mentor and colleague, Sean Roden, in room 249 of the Marriott Courtyard Hotel, located at 101, 10701 South Holiday Park Drive, Salt Lake County. Roden was visiting Utah from California. And this is where I think it's kind of weird. This story kind of doesn't add up to me. Um, the photographer stayed in the lobby while LKH went up to the room. After LKH went into the room, Roden started kissing her. He pushed his groin against LKH, and she could feel that his penis was erect. So this is where it's kind of weird to me. Um, if the photographer and this girl are going together to Sean Roden's hotel to visit Sean Roden because he's Mr. Olympia, he's their bodybuilding mentor, they look up to him, whatever. Um, so both the photographer and this girl go to the hotel why would the girl go up alone and the photographer stay in the lobby if they were both just going there to visit Sean Roden? Why would the girl need private time with Sean without the photographer? If Sean really was just a mentor figure or whatever, why would they need like private time? But anyway, just an observation. And keep in mind, this woman is married at this time. And apparently based on what I've heard, Sean Roden was not married at the time that this happened. So yes, he has a daughter with a woman, but apparently at the time that this happened, um, he was not married and supposedly not in a relationship. So even if they did have consensual sex, it wouldn't have been extramarital and it wouldn't have been an affair, at least not on Sean Roden's behalf. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So the statement goes on to say, she asked him to stop repeatedly and tried to push him away. The kissing progressed to Roden lifting up LKH's shirt, exposing her breasts. Um, Roden began sucking on LKH's breasts and nipples. She tried to pull her shirt down and he conti and continued telling him to stop. Now, I've heard all kinds of crazy theories about the DNA evidence obtained um, regarding Sean Roden. But to my knowledge, the DNA evidence was taken from her breast and the match was Sean's saliva. So to my knowledge, the DNA was not semen, it was saliva, and it was taken from her breasts. Now, while that does make things look a little bit better for Sean Roden, I think at the same time, it does show us that this woman did go and report this immediately and did have the rape kit or the DNA sample taken immediately uh, because if this sample was on the surface of her skin, 
the, it would have had to have been taken right away. So she definitely went straight to police or straight to the hospital or whatever and reported this as a rape, which I think actually works in her favor. The fact that she did, in fact, report it right away and didn't wait until eight months later to report it. Um, and over the past eight months, we've been waiting on the DNA. Now, this does also show us that Sean likely had some kind of contact with law enforcement in the very beginning of this whole process where they took a sample of his DNA because likely his DNA was not already in the system. So this is something that's probably been going on for a very long time, something that Sean's probably known about since the very beginning um, and something that's probably been stressing and weighing very heavily on Sean's mind because he didn't know what was going to happen. He probably gave that DNA sample, uh, maybe gave a brief interview with authorities um, and then probably didn't hear anything back while they were building their case against him. So that could be the real reason why we saw a quote out of shape Sean Roden at those guest posings like the Pittsburgh Pro. Maybe he knew ahead of time, you know, this wasn't going to be something he was even going to be able to do. This wasn't a prep he was going to be able to finish. This was something that um, he wasn't even sure if he was going to be at the Olympia to begin with. Because even though these charges have just now been made public, this is something that's probably been going on and that people have known about probably since the day after it happened. I mean, the first time I heard something about it was probably about five months ago. But honestly, I just didn't believe what I was hearing because I, I felt like I knew Sean. I felt like he was a good guy. I felt like he was a good Mr. Olympia. When I did that charity video for that officer um, that was in that accident and it made the news and I was asking pro bodybuilders to make videos um, wishing that officer a speedy recovery, Sean Roden was the first person to say yes and send me a video. He just always seemed like a really nice guy to me, so I never believed anything that I was hearing. And then when these charges came out, you know, there was just kind of no denying that this was a situation. So let's get to this final paragraph here. Roden bent LKH over the bed, face down, and pulled her pants down. LKH continued yelling Roden to stop and that she didn't want to do this. Roden flipped LKH over on her back and pulled his penis out of his pants. LKH was scared because Rogan is much or Roden is much bigger and stronger than she is, and he was easily overpowering her. Roden placed the tip of his penis in LKH's vagina and put his fingers in her vagina. LK told um, Roden that she needed to go downstairs or else her photographer would know something was up. Roden let her leave, and LKH contacted her husband and the police. Now, I want to go into the next part here. So this portion of the court documents actually explains in a little bit more detail what the charges are against Sean Roden. So... The state of Utah versus Sean Roden, date of birth 4-2-1975. It's got his bail there at $750,000, which again, I think is kind of a bad sign for Sean Roden. The fact that the bail is so high um, suggests that they probably have a pretty solid case or a pretty solid reason to believe he might be a flight risk. It goes on to say the undersigned Melissa Crandall, Sandy City Police Department agency case, blah, blah, blah. Upon a written declaration states in on information and belief that the defendant, Sean Roden, committed the crimes of. So the thing that I just read you, that is what these counts are based on. So the interesting part here is this has a uh, typo in it. It says October 12, 2019. This happened back in 2018. But anyway, count one is rape, which is a first degree felony um, that on or about October 12, 2019 in Salt Lake City, the state of Utah, the defendant did have sexual intercourse with another person without the victim's consent. So again, I just want to point out here that even though they do have DNA, um, and even though I think the DNA is only saliva, even if they had semen or whatever, all that proves is that they had a sexual relationship. It doesn't prove whether or not it was consensual. The only thing that they're going off of here, um, as far as the rape determination, is the story that I just read you. So that story is the reason why Sean is going through all of this. It's not the DNA. The DNA was taken because of the story. And I've seen a lot of comments on these videos saying, well, there's DNA, so Sean is, he obviously did it. Sean screwed. The DNA doesn't really mean anything. Count two object rape, which is also a first degree felony. Now, this is something that I had a lot of people asking about in the comment section, something I wasn't too sure that I understood very well either. So it says object rape, first degree felony as follows that on or about October 12th, 2018 in Salt Lake County, the state of Utah, the defendant did without the victim's consent cause the penetration, however slight of the genital or anal opening of another person who was 14 years of age or older. 
by any foreign object, substance, instrument, or device, including a part of the human body other than the mouth or genitals. With the intent to cause substantial emotional or bodily pain to the victim or with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person, I believe this is referring to where it said he inserted his fingers into her vagina. I believe that's basically what this is. And then finally here, you have count three, forcible sexual abuse, um, which is second degree felony as follows. That on or about October 12th, 2018 in Salt Lake County, state of Utah, the defendant did where the victim was 14 years of age or older touch the anus, buttocks, or pubic area or any part of the genitals of another or touch the breast of a female or otherwise took indecent liberties with another um, with intent to cause substantial emotional or bodily pain to any person without the intent with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person without the consent of the other regardless of the sex of any participant. And I believe this part is directly related to the part about her breasts. So those court documents and those updates are pretty much as specific as it gets um, when it comes to really putting together a picture of what happened between Sean Roden and this woman in that hotel room. But really, at the end of the day, nobody knows what happened there besides those two. And it's also important to note, we have not heard Sean Roden's side of the story yet. This has been completely one-sided. It's been allegations against Sean. It's been charges against Sean. And we haven't heard Sean say a word about what's going on or what actually happened. And probably a lot of that is due to the fact that this is an ongoing case. And it's probably not going to serve his best interest to say anything, really. Um, but maybe just a statement saying, hey, I didn't do this. I'm innocent. But I guess only time will tell and we will see. So that is the latest update on Sean. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I will keep you guys posted as more updates happen about Sean and the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Um, so make sure you subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.